The topic of the video today is the reproductive system. So we're going to break this system up into male and female. So the first thing I'm going to go over is the male system. Alright, so let's start by drawing a figure like we usually do. This is going to be a mid-sagittal mid-sagittal cuts. We're going to have a lateral view of a male. So let's draw some stuff out. Alright, so penis, testes, we'll label all of those things later. But I want to get a few more things down. Bear with me as I draw it all out. Sometimes I do like to um, just keep this stuff to make sure that you can follow along with me and draw with me as if we we're in class, but I know sometimes it does get tedious, so I hear you. If you want to just fast forward, that is cool with me. I swear this is going to look a lot better once it's actually done and colored. Alright, sweet. We got these crazy tubes going. Now it's time to label them. Oops, I forgot a line there. Alright, so hope you had an opportunity to fast forward through all that time. Because this is a weird drawing. Now, remember, we're looking at the side of a male's body with this mid-sagittal cut. So, let's start with one big thing um, that we do already know about. And that's going to be our bladder. That's what we um, learned about last time. So all of this stuff is going to kind of be, or a lot of this stuff is going to be surrounding the bladder. So I'm going to point it out. It's not technically part of the reproductive system, but it's right in the vicinity. So we are going to label it for reference. So this is going to be penis. Oftentimes, the pe people think the penis just ends, like, right where it attaches to the body right here, but it actually extends further. So, it's all of this, and then on this side, too. And do you remember what that thing is that's flowing through the penis right there? Or the vessel that travels through the penis? We learned about it during our last lecture to give you a little hint. That is the urethra. And do you remember the different parts of the urethra? I hope so. 
Alrighty, so now that we have those major organs, the bladder and the penis, I'm going to label the testes. We've talked about those before, but only, um, I believe we discussed them with the endocrine system, and I think that was it. So we're going to go in a little bit more detail. So the testes have two different functions. They produce sperm and they produce testosterone, which is probably the most important male hormone. Alrighty, so we have testes, then this thing that's sitting right on top of it, kind of surrounding it, is something called the epididymis. So let's label that. Ep Alright. So what the epididymis does is it it um is an area in which sperm can grow and mature, but more importantly it stores sperm. What's cool is the epididymis is actually like a long coil um, that's just shoved together in this little area. But if you were to take it apart and stretch it out, I think it would be something like 20 feet long, which is pretty insane. But it's as the, um, the immature sperm that are produced in the testes. When they're brought into the epididymis, they travel through all these little things um, that all this like whole vessel that helps with the maturity of the sperm and then once they're mature they're stored in the epididymis as well so that's a pretty important structure right there now the this surrounding area around the testes is called the scrotum Oops, scrotum. And the reason why the testes are outside or separated from the body is it because is because it helps it maintain a cooler temperature. I believe it's like two to three degrees cooler, um, which basically facilitates the production of sperm. And that's why um, when in colder weather or even in like cold water, the muscles will pull the scrotum up to bring it closer to the body. Alrighty. So next we have a few what we call accessory glands to review. So I'm actually just gonna, um, we'll, we'll label those in a bit, but the first one is going to be the prostate. And we talked about that last time during the urinary lecture as well. That's going to be the structure right below the bladder. And the other, um, we have three total accessory glands. The first one is your prostate. The second one is your bulbourethral glands. And for those, they are, it's kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's a bulbous gland and it's actually this little thing right here. So let's label that. All right, 
Um, there's actually two of those, whereas there's only one prostate in the body. So let me just add gland to that prostate name and just remind you that there's one. And then there are actually two bolioretho glands in the body. And then the last accessory gland I want to bring your attention to is seminal vesicles. And those, these all play important roles in terms of what they contribute to to produce um, and release semen. So your seminal vesicle is going to be this little thing right here. I'll color it a nice bright orange. And then there are also two of those. So all three of these, those are our accessory glands. All right. So in terms of, let's see, what else do we have to label? Um, oh, I forgot the vas deferens. Let's label that. We will make that, hmm, I, I think I'll make that red. Oh, it looks a little bit close to that orange structure that I labeled before. Make sure you don't get that confused. I, wanna, I wish there was a way for me to improve that a little bit more, but I'm trying to make it a little bit darker to make sure it stands out from it. All right, plus of vast and it's also sometimes called the um, ductus deferens. Same thing. Alrighty. So in terms of those accessory glands or accessory organs, um, they play pretty important roles. So this bulbo urethral gland, the most important function is that it um, produces and provides the pre-ejaculate, which serves as like lubricant and clears out the urine because what happens is a sperm is going to travel through these three different parts of the urethra just like urine does so let me just write a little note bubble urethra gland gland it produces pre ejaculate Ooh, sorry that's a little squished there but it says pre ejaculate um, and then what the prostate gland and the seminal vesicles do is they help produce, they contribute different things um, to help form semen. And what's actually cool, this is just like a fun fact, for the seminal vesicles, what they do is they're, they produce, I think it's like 60% of semen. And what the seminal vesicles produce is this this uh, liquid substance that's high in fructose. And then the sperm actually use that fructose to generate ATP to help them move through the female reproductive system. So that's pretty cool. So semen is well thought out. So anyway, um, just to review that process, I'm not going to go through... Actually, you know what? I will. I will label the urethra. The urethra is special. We're going to label him again. All right. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So 
there are a couple of other things that I'm not going to cover that are in a white here, but it's just because I don't really want you to have to know the name of it, um, of these different little vessels. But essentially what happens is, is, um, the testes produce the sperm. They're matured and stored in the epididymis. And then when it comes time for ejacu ejaculation of the sperm in semen, the sperm travel through the vas deferens and they go up and over the bladder. And what happens is they are brought into the prostatic urethra along with um, seminal, like fluid, the beginning of semen that comes out of the seminal vesicle, which is just anterior to the end of the vas deferens and together those help form semen you also get a little bit of um uh contribution from the prostate as it enters here so by the time you get here into the membranous urethra which is right under or inferior to the prostate and then as you go through penile urethra you start to have sperm and then the only other thing is that the bulbal urethral gland um also contributes the pre-ejaculate to go through and then everything falls through the penile urethra and then it can be ejaculated. So that's kind of like the pathway of sperm. Now in terms of the just like the structure of the penis, I want to label that separately. So let's do that below. So we're going to label penis. Alrighty, so let's go over, I'm just going to draw it out. And then I'm also going to do, I think I'm going to do a cross section as well. Just so you can see what the penis is composed of. So it'll make it a little bit easier to understand like the different parts of it. So we're just going to do a cross section here. Alright, so this down here is a cross section of this penis right here, okay? So let's label some different parts. So we have the root of the penis, which is here. Then we have the shaft. Sometimes this is called the body as well. This is unintentionally a very bright colored penis. All right. So here is our shaft. And then we also have the glands. And then we learned about this last time, the urethral orifice, where the urine comes out. Alrighty, so in terms of this cross section, remember this is a cross section of the penis here. And we're gonna label a few different parts. So we have the 
urethra. Um, just like we've talked about is traveling through the penis like we've looked at before. So I'll label that. Right here. Ooh, that wasn't the best choice. It's brown. It's kind of hard to see around that black, but it's the urethra. And then we have a few different parts. <coughs> so we have the corpa cavernosa, which is the two pairs right here. And then we have the corpa spongiosum, which is the single thing down here. This is a pair, so there's two of them. It's Corpora cavernosa, and then we're gonna have the Corpora spongiosum, which contains the urethra inside of it. Corpora spongiosum. Now let's see, is there anything else I want to review with you? Um, we already did talk about earlier in terms of blood flow that the testes are given blood through the testicular artery and vein. And then, actually, there's a few more things I want to talk about for the male reproductive system. So let's add another page. So sperm is what we care about, right? Because that's what um, is being produced and eventually ejaculated. So let's talk about sperm really quickly. So I'm going to actually draw one out and we're going to label it and then I want to talk a little bit about ejaculation. So we're going to give the sperm a little hat. There's a little sperm for us, and let's label the different parts. Alright, so we have the acrosome, which is like this little hat looking thing on the sperm. And it actually produces, um, enzymes to break through an egg. To assist with fertilization. Then we have the head of the sperm. And we have the body, sometimes also it's called the mid piece. And the main function of this is it, um, it contains mitochondria which helps with APD, A, ATP production for like swimming energy. And remember, it gets that from the fructose in the fluid that's ejected by it, or provided by the seminal vesicles. So ATP to swim. 
and then we have something called the flagellum which is the end the little like tail part here and we're actually going to do a little cross section of the flagellum as well just to show us um it's just kind of like an interesting setup so that is flagellum so for a cross section of that i'm actually gonna do it just right next to this And it's interesting, there's like a nine to two little pattern um, that exists within the flagellum that allows it to do that like swimming fluid motion. So all I want you to know is that it's a nine to two pattern and it's actually developed in a way for the um, flagellum to be able to move to facilitate that swimming. like a nine oh, excuse me a nine plus two so oh, nine plus two pattern Alrighty. um so we discussed sperm now one more thing i want to discuss is just erections so for erections um it's actually control like initiated and maintained with the sympathetic or excuse me parasympathetic system but then ejaculation is driven by the sympathetic system And one other thing I do want to bring up is our pelvic floor muscles. So remember, though they're um, really important in terms of sexual function, that's one of the actions of the pelvic floor muscles, and in terms of achieving and maintaining an erection, yes, there is a physiological component in terms of our involvement with our nervous system here, but studies have shown that if we do pelvic floor strengthening of some of the more superficial muscles, in that connect to the penis that we can improve men's ability to achieve and maintain an erection so oftentimes if people report erectile dysfunction yes there is a medicinal route we can go where we use drugs to help facilitate that erection but strengthening of pelvic floor muscles and proper strengthening of pelvic floor muscles is really important so just a side note about that and remember a lot of times people don't do pelvic floor muscle contractions correctly so that's why people like me who do pelvic physical therapy can be important for not only things like pelvic pain and like leaking urine so urinary incontinence and all of that stuff but it can also be important for helping me um maintain and just achieve um sexual function that people desire so this wraps up the male part of our reproductive system so now let's move on to the female all right so now we're going to learn about the female reproductive system We're going to start with the uterus and what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to draw you a little tiny uterus so you can see what the main parts of it are and then I'm going to draw a more detailed structure so we can go into the detailed components of it. So to start off I'm just going to draw out the main little shape here. So this is what our uterus looks like okay this is just a little one just so we can label the different parts so the top part of the uterus right here is called the fundus
then we will have the body of the uterus. Which is all of this area. Which makes sense. It's the bulk, bulk of it. The body. And then we're also going to have the cervix. Which is the lowermost part. So now let's take this uterus and draw a bigger, more detailed version of it so we can label all of those different parts. So bear with me as I do that. Again, you can always kind of fast forward through here if you don't feel like watching me draw stuff out. But we're almost done here. Alright, I think that's the main structures we got. Now I'm going to go into drawing a few ligaments as well. And then we will finally be able to label all these guys. All right, sweet. So here is a, a zoomed in more detailed version of the uterus. So remember we have the fundus right here. We have the body right here. And then the cervix right there, okay? So now let's take a little bit of a closer look. So we have three different layers of the cervix. Remember if this is a, we're looking at a coronal, um, cross section here, so. Chrono cross section. So this is an anterior view, like we're cutting this um, in the coronal plane. Now we're going to have three different layers of the uterine tissue. So on the outside, the outermost layer of the uterus is going to be all the perimetrium. Remember, peri usually means around, so that's why we're calling it that. So let's color that in. I'm going to write the word just up here so we have enough space as we go down. So, perimetrium. Alrighty, then we're going to have the myometrium in the middle, but it's going to be a little bit easier if we draw the innermost layer first, and that's actually going to be the endometrium. So, let's draw that part first. First,
All right, so that's that innermost layer. And then this is just space inside because there is space inside of the uterus. It's going to be a little bit smaller. And the uterus is actually pretty small. It's about like two by three inches in a normal human. So anyway, let's draw that um, middle layer, the myometrium. And as you can see with different things, like we always talk about layers and things are having different, um, almost like casings or protective layers. Now this myometrium, myo means muscle. So that's the part of the uterus that can do like uterine contractions during childbirth and also during menstruation, um, which is commonly just felt as cramps. Those are actually uterine contractions. So we just drew out our myometrium. And remember myo means muscle. And then endometrium was that inner layer. And the endometrium is actually composed of two smaller layers, and the innermost layer of the endometrium is what is shed each time during menstruation. So I'm just going to make a note that half of it is shed each time. Alrighty, so we have those three different layers of the uterus. Remember, we're still looking at the body of the uterus in here, just like that, but there is space in there. Now, let's label a few different parts. So we also have the fallopian tubes, also called the uterine tubes. So that is going to be these right here. Um, all right, so these fallopian tubes, that's actually where fertilization takes place. So I'm just going to write a little note. Fertilization. So the egg will come through and then usually right around the middle part, um, in something in this component of the fallopian tube, that's where the sperm will have swum up and it meets the egg usually around there. So anyway, that's where fertilization takes place. But um, at the very end of the fallopian tube, there is a certain part of it that is called the fimbriae. So that's here where these little almost finger-like projections are the brown part. All right, so now I want to, we already have the cervix, but there is a little opening of the cervix where either a the sperm can enter through for fertil for on the way for fertilization to take place or where a baby can, or fetus can exit during childbirth and that is called the os of the cervix because remember the cervix is this part right here just like we saw up there now the other thing i want to point out is our ovaries right here This green is running out. So sorry, my ovary looks 
lighter than intended, but those are ovaries. I need a new light green pen. All right, hopefully you can see that. So we have our ovaries and then we have a bunch of ligaments that are going to hold the uterus and the ovaries in place. So the ovaries are actually a separate entity from the uterus, but they do, um, the ovary can send basically a less matured egg and bring it and help it mature and bring it in through the fimbria into the fallopian tube. So these are different structures. Now let's label some of the different ligaments. Now there's actually something that is called the broad ligament and it is just what it sounds like. So you have a broad ligament that essentially holds, it's the main ligament that holds the, the uterus in place. So it actually takes place all around here. So I'm just going to do it with some like squiggled lines, but it's really like a flat sheet. It just would take me forever to color it in with this blue <laughs> highlighter. So the broad ligament is going to be here. It's basically just going to be connecting the fallopian tubes and the uterus and basically holding it in place. So I'm doing that with some squiggle lines instead of just a big sheet, but it really just does like a look like a big flat sheet. So that is our broad ligament and these are uterine ligaments. So I'll make a little note here. Uterine ligaments. We have broad ligament. I'm just abbreviating ligament there. So we also have the round ligament and that round ligament is actually going to be pretty important because it, <coughs> um, it, travels in the inguinal region and actually goes down and attaches into labia majora. So let me label that round ligament for you. It's going to be this large one. It's going to be red. But um, it, it goes through the inguinal region and then it goes and it actually attaches to labia majora. And we'll talk about labia majora and just like external female anatomy in a little bit. But it goes through and it attaches to that structure. And oftentimes, um, with pregnancy, individuals will have pain kind of in their, in their abdominal area where the baby or the fetus is growing and then um, they may have pain at their labia majora because as the baby is growing this round ligament gets pulled on and it gets really tight and irritated and it travels remember through that inguinal region down into labia majora which is like those lips of the external anatomy for females so oftentimes if someone has pain there something we can do is just use a belt or cloth of some kind to lift up the belly and therefore lift up the fetus and the uterus to take some of the stress off of the round ligament and that can be a really great way to give them some pain relief during pregnancy. Alrighty, so one other ligament that I want to discuss is the uterosacral ligament. And that is right here. Uterosacral ligament. And that helps essentially connect it to the posterior um, area of the pelvis because remember we have that word sacral in it. So it attaches the uterus to the sacrum. Now that covers our main ligaments for the uterus that help kind of hold it up and keep it in place. Now we also have two different ligaments that hold up the ovary and help keep it in place. So the first one 
I'm going to talk about is the suspensory ligament of the ovary, which is right here and right here. So we had uterine ligaments, and then we're also going to have um, ovarian ligaments. And the first one, as we mentioned, is the sus suspensory ligament. And then the last ligament that we're going to discuss is going to be the ovarian ligament, which attaches the ovary to the uterus. Ovarian ligament. All right. Um, a few other things I want to talk about is the the vagina. So here we have the uterus, remember right here, this is a cervix, there's an opening of the cervix, which is the os right here, making way for the vaginal canal. So we're gonna color in the vagina. Oftentimes, when people are talking about the vagina, that's, um, they're actually referring to the external anatomy of the, of the female, which is incorrect. It's actually just this canal is the vagina. but we'll review the external anatomy for clarification later. And within the vagina, we actually have some like transverse uh, bumps essentially that are called vaginal rugae that help the vagina like expand um, when necessary during intercourse in delivery of, of a baby. So it's just gonna be That's going to be our vaginal rugae. Alrighty, so this covers our internal anatomy, um, the main parts of the uterus and the different attachments of the uterus and ovary. And now the other thing that I want to cover is the external anatomy. All right, so now let's review external anatomy. So external reproductive anatomy. So we talk about things in terms of triangles, actually. So we are actually going to have two different triangles for both males and females. So I'm going to go ahead and draw those out for us. Now, when we're talking about these two different triangles, they are imaginary triangles, so we can't actually see them. But they have landmarks for the different points that help us understand where those triangles are. And when we're talking about these triangles, this is if we're almost like if you have ever had your feet like in stirrups. So it's as if someone was going to have like a gynecological exam or what people commonly know as the delivery position. Um, which, side note, oftentimes it's only in Western medicine that women deliver on their back. Oftentimes what has to happen during delivery is your sacrum has to rotate and what ha what keeps your sacrum from rotating is a table if you're lying on your back and it's squishing your sacrum. So only in Western medicine do women deliver on their back and 
um, one simple fix for that to keep your sacrum from getting squished and like your tailbone from getting squished from uh, the table that you're laying on is to put a towel run roll under each in ischial tuberosity or sit bone to help lift the pelvis up off the table to allow for the sacrum to rotate to help the baby get out. So anyway, that's a side note, but this is the, um, almost like the a position that would in, be in stirrups. So I'm just going to write that position in stirrups. Hopefully I spelled that right. All right. So this is for a male and this is for a female. Now we have the urogenital triangle which is here and here and then we have the anal triangle which is there and there so here is urogenital and then here is anal so our landmarks for these different triangles, I'm going to go ahead and draw in. So for these ends of both of the triangles, the landmark is going to be the ischial tuberosities. So remember, we're looking at someone in that um, stirrup position. So we're looking at their anatomy there. Anus is going to be right down here, and on the female vaginal opening, it's going to be up there, just as a reference as we're talking about these landmarks. Um, at the bottom, we're going to have the coccyx. Remember, that's our tailbone. And then at the top, we're going to have our pubic symphysis. So isn't that cool that we've already talked about all the muscular components and uh, bony components of anatomy? And now that we've done that, I can tell you all of these landmarks without you questioning it. You already know where all those things are. All right, so one other thing is at the bottom borders here is where um, ischial tuberosity will, I mean, excuse me, not ischial tuberosity, sacrotuberous ligament. So the sacrum is a little bit uh, more superior than the coccyx, but this does tend to run across sacrotuberous ligament. So let's draw that in. So this is approximate, remember it's going to attach to the sacrum instead of the, instead of the, um, coccyx. And that's something we learned about when we were talking about the skeletal system as well. All right, so in the anal triangle, of course, we're going to have the anus. I'm trying to use a color that I haven't yet. Anus. And remember something to consider here is all around both of these triangles, there's a bunch of pelvic floor muscles. Now it's beyond the scope of this course to go into the details of those pelvic floor muscles, but just keep in mind that there are a lot of superficial muscles here and deeper muscles. If you look further into this triangle where there are pelvic floor muscles, so do keep that in mind. That's an important component of these triangles, but we're not going to draw them in right now because we don't want it to be too detailed. All right. So for the male urogenital, urogenital triangle, at the top, we're going to have penis and the penile urethra as well. All right. So for the male at the top here, 
Um, it's going to be kind of connected to around the area where the pubic symphysis is. So I'm just going to draw it right below, but sort of at the top here is going to be the penis for males. So this is just as if we're looking at the one end of the penis and we're going to have the penile urethra in there as well. So penis. And penile urethra. All right, so that's pretty much what we need to know for the male urogenital triangle. Now, the female one is a little bit more specific. <clears throat> so we're going to have a few different components here. So up at the very top, we're going to have something called the mons pubis. Um, men actually have it as well. But it's a little bit smaller. So I'm going to draw it bigger on the females and then smaller on the males. And that's like um, connective tissue and adipose. It's just like that little mound of tissue towards the top. And if you want to get a better look at it, definitely look it up online. So Mons Pubis or in your anatomy textbook is a great resource as well. All right, so then for female external anatomy, we're also going to have um, different labia. We're going to have a labia majora and a labia minora. So the majora is going to be on the outside. So that is going to be from about here all the way down to about here. Libya Majora and then we're also going to have Labia Minora and that's going to be like the inner lip So we're also going to have the clitoris up here. And this is just one part of the clitoris. Um, I will go into a little bit more detail on that in a moment. And then we're also going to have the urethra right here. And then we're going to have the vaginal opening as well. All right, so that covers what I wanted to cover for these two different triangles. Um, in terms of this like stirrup view, remember we have the anal triangle and then the urogenital tri triangle with all of this external anatomy for females. Now, one other thing that I did want to talk about is 
just giving you another look at the clitoris because it is more than just this little part that's poking through right there. So I'm just going to do that right down below here. Just have a little section for the clitoris. It is the only organ um, that's designated for pleasure only, which is interesting. So let's, I'm going to draw it out right here. So remember that up here, we just saw a little red part of the clitoris. So that red part is actually going to be this little aspect right here. So that's all we can see from the outside. But the rest of the clitoris is actually way bigger. So it's actually this whole thing is all clitoris. So there's a lot more to the clitoris than what you can see from the outside. So it's all of this. Now you have these different bulbs off to the side, and we call them the. Here, I'll write down clitoris, even though it's written up there. Clitoris. Now we have a few bulbs that are these guys right here. Oops, I intentionally made this look very Christmassy. I have seen a clitoris ornament before side note this was not intentional though so this is the bulb of the vestibule and now this is very similar to the clitoris and kind of functions with it in terms of the clitoral tissues changing when a female is aroused um it's just called a different name but they they kind of work in unison and then for reference, remember, so we talked about the clitoris up here, urethra right here, and then vaginal opening. So just for reference, this is our urethral opening. And our vaginal opening right here. But the other structures are just deeper inside, so we can't see them from the outside. So if you can see both of these, we have our urethral opening that you can see outside right here, vaginal opening that you can see outside right here as well, this little dot of the clitoris that you can see on the outside, and just the corresponding little part of the clitoris right there, and the rest of the clitoris is deeper along with the bulbs of the vestibule. And that's our female reproductive anatomy.